All right, so this is going to kind of be an add on to um, a couple of the other videos where we talked about the valve positions of that temport valve that's putting either the pre column or the analytical column um, in line. And so to do that, I'm going to use diagrams that actually come um, with one of the manuals, which should make this a little bit easier. And so if we look at our configuration, so this is similar to what we saw of the setup of the LC. So over here we have our solvent bottles. Um, in our solvent rack. This is our degasser. This is our pump module. This is our column module and this is our auto sampler. You can ignore this central component right now, but effectively that's going to be the mass spec. Um, or if you didn't have a mass spec up, hooked up to this would be your UV analyzer. Um, so um, right here we have our solvent jars A, B, and C. These are our loading solvents. You can see that they come into the degasser. The lines come out. They feed into this loading pump block and then go down into um, our auto sampler. We also have our um, aqueous, which is at solvent A, and mobile, which is um, solvent B, that are being pumped into our left and our right blocks, which then feed into our pro flow meter, which is going to mix them at appropriate concentrations. And then you have that line coming out that goes into this 10 port valve in the column chamber. In the column chamber, we have two separate columns. So we have the C18 column here, which is our pre-column. And this is the pre-column setup or pre-concentration setup onto a nano column, right? Um, and then this right here, the acclaimed PET map, that is our analytical column. So when we are um, normally pumping, in the one, two position, what that means is that things are flowing through this valve going from one to two, and then three to four, and five to six, and so on. And then in the 10, one position, um, basically that's going to switch, okay? Um, and so it's just different ways of aligning these different valves to put things um, in line or not in line. And so when we are in the one, two position, which typically is what happens when we're loading our sample, is our flow from the loading pump is going to go from our solvent bottles into our pump module, down one of our capillary tubes, and into this port. Um, it can pick up sample um, depending on which position you have this port in um, or it could just go directly to this line and kind of bypass that but basically so that would be the difference between the injector load um, position on the auto sampler but basically this is going to come up into our 10 port valve and just go straight to waste. So this is one of the reasons why we're running this right now that I have the loading pump turned off is because basically all we're doing is pumping 2% of acetonitrile into a waste container. Um, and the flow rates are high enough that you'll go through an appreciable amount of it um, over time. So to kind of conserve that, we turn it off. For the nano pump, so you have solvent A and solvent B that are going to come into their um, various blocks. Those are going to get mixed together. I lost my little dry guy um, in this flow meter. And they're going to come down and in the one, two position, flow directly onto the column and then get sent out to the mass spec, okay? So in this one, two position, solvent is flowing through the column, which help keeps it, keeps it equilibrated. Um, it keeps those pumps working, but basically all we're doing is spraying in um, very small proportions of acetonitrile, water, and formic acid. When we want to load our sample, we need to change the configurations of these valves. And so instead of just pumping stuff to waste and pumping stuff um, out to um, the column, we need to make sure all these things are in line with one another. And so to do that, 
one of the things that happens is your sample in the inject position is going to put your sample in tiny amounts into the sample loop. Once it's in the sample loop and it has the right amount of loading buffer and everything in there, it's going to switch into the load position, okay? And so what's happening as we're loading this, which you can calculate the time based on the flow rate and the distance of your tubing of how long this is gonna take to actually load your sample from here onto your column, um, or at least onto your trap column um, by just doing some simple math. But in the one-two position, so what would happen is you have your loading buffer coming down. Um, it will pick up your solvent if this switches into the inject position and move it up to here. It can go into the C18 column and get loaded or basically um, It attracts the sample because it's charged, um, which bind to these tiny little um, silica fibers thingies that make up the column. Um, and all of the other kind of junk that's in there can still get diverted out to waste, okay? When we want to put this onto the column, what we're gonna do is change that valve configuration. And so our sample Basically, this happens um, usually before your method starts. So um, if you remember, we'll have like an equilibration period. You'll load your sample. It'll, it takes, um, at least for nano, about 15 minutes for this to actually start um, acquiring. And so that 15 minutes is taking it to pick up that one microliter, load everything onto the C18 column. Um, make sure that your one microliter liter of sample has gotten there and that things are equilibrated before you're going to actually put your column in line. So when you change that valve position, what happens instead of this going out to waste is it goes in this direction. And so it's going to um, come onto your column and then this allows you to set up your gradient. And so by varying that valve position, you're now putting your trap column in line so that whatever is coming up from the auto sampler and effectively what's coming from the loading pump is going onto your column instead of going to waste. Um, and then just to kind of show you kind of a different diagram, um, annotate. Oops. There we go. Um, so this should be um, just kind of like a shorter version showing this different configuration. So you can actually see um, the flow of path from um, the loading buffer through the auto sampler up and out through waste or through um, A and B down into a claim pet map. And then by switching the valve direction, everything is gonna kind of go in the opposite orientation. So that is how um, we have our um, pre-column set up. If you wanted to do a direct um, connection, instead of, um, having a trout column there, basically you take that whole thing out of line and you can just load things directly onto your analytical column. We typically don't do that because our samples are messy, but if you had a purified sample, that would probably be a preferred route because you lose less of your sample by doing it. So you have one less step where things could basically go wrong. So that is how um, to configure the valve ports in your different um, lines so that your sample actually gets loaded onto the column.